everyone, I'm back to do my video on the closet organizing accessories that I used to organize my closet with from my last video, but I also wanted to share with you the process that I used to organize my closet with along with a few closet organizing tips. So first I want to get into the process. The very first thing that I did when I found out I wanted to reorganize my closet or when I decided to reorganize my closet was to decide what I wanted to store in my closet and what I didn't want to store in my closet. People store different things in their closets. For us, we don't have a basement or an attic space, so we, we ha have to really utilize our closet space the best that we can. And because of that, we know we need to store suitcases in our closet. We like to store our ironing board in our closet because we do all of our ironing in the bedroom and then just hang it back up. That's easier for us. I know that I wanted to store our special stuff in the closet, and I wanted a space for the dry cleaning, the tailoring, and the stuff that we might want to be getting rid of in the future. Now, I also thought about what I wanted to store in our closet versus our dresser. Some people use their closet space, they have door systems, and that's their dresser and their closet space. But we have certain things in our dresser versus our closet. So that kind of helped us determine how to organize it as well. For instance, I wanted to keep my shorts in our closet, but my husband likes to keep his shorts in his dresser. So that's kind of a determining factor in how you organize. We also determined what we wanted to fold versus what we wanted to hang. I ideally love to hang everything, but with the space that we had, that was kind of unrealistic if I wanted there to be room to grow and if I wanted to use the space the best that it probably could be used. So I decided to fold my shorts and my jeans along with my, uh, let's see what else, oh, along with all my workout attire and everything. And actually now after having all that folded, I like that a lot better than if it were hung. So, and it's easier. So that ended up working out, but I decided what I wanted to fold versus what I wanted to hang. And then from there, knowing everything that I want to store in my closet and what I want to fold versus hang, I then came up with my plan. So I went to Lowe's and I picked Lowe's over Container Store because for me, Lowe's is only five minutes down the road. So if I forgot something or needed to pick something up extra, it's a quick drive versus the 45 minutes for the Container Store. That and the Closet Made system was more inexpensive than the Container Store system and this isn't going to be our forever home so we don't want to invest a ton of money in this closet but we do want to organize. So at Lowe's I saw the different organizing systems and the wire shelves and the kits versus buying things individually. I saw that they had these gorgeous Roth and Allen shelves. I priced things out, went home, and then I drew out a floor plan of the closet, what I think that I wanted. And I ended up doing two rows, two hanging rows on top of each other in the closet, along with a higher space that I can hang longer things on, and then a shelf. So my husband wanted the same thing that worked for him well. So we mirrored both sides of the closet. And then I knew I wanted to really utilize the middle space. It was a closet made shelving system to put in that middle space. So that's kind of how we decided what we wanted. Well, actually I kind of decided it. My husband just loved it. So that worked out. Okay. So then the next thing you do is after you come up with your plan, you know now how to organize the things that you want to keep in your closet, purge. Go through your closet and the best way to do this honestly is to take everything out and then go through it and then put everything back in. So for us, well actually honestly I didn't think I had to take everything out in order to purge properly. I just thought no I already know what's in there, I don't need to do that. But let me tell you, we had to take out everything because we had to put up our new closet system. So we ended up taking everything out anyways. And when I went to go put things back in, I was 
more honest with myself on what I knew I would keep and really use and what I wouldn't. So I ended up getting rid of a ton of things. And the thing is, I really don't miss those items, not at all. So putting our items back in, I really enjoyed because I knew that everything I was putting back in my closet, I loved and I used. And that I think is the best use of space. So purge. And the next thing you do is once everything's out and you're purging, go ahead, put up your new closet system if that's what you choose to do. Maybe you already like the system that you have and you don't need to do that, but I still recommend taking everything out to purge it. And then once you get everything out and you have the system that you want put up, put everything back and then you start your tweaking. Get the bins that you want, the containers that you want, that sort of thing. You can see what you want to group together to put in the container. So I knew that I had all my hats that I wanted to bin for my hat. So once I got everything in, I kind of was able to move things around and see kind of where I wanted them and what I needed to bin for and then I was able to tweak and go from there and get this thing like the belt hangers and things like that. So let me go ahead and go over what I chose as far as the accessories. So the first thing is I went to Target and I ended up getting these bins. And I chose these bins because I really like the white. They have a mint there too. But to me the white's clean and I just happen to be attracted to white in general. And you can't see through them. I like the fact that you can't see through them because then your closet sometimes with all clear things, can it can look cluttered and messy still and it doesn't give you that even clean look that you might be going for, which is what I was going for. And sometimes clear bins are great when you organize, but in this case, I didn't want to use those. And these were also very economical. They were a great price. They came in different sizes. This was an amazing find. So target for these. Then the next place I went to for my, uh, for my special things was Michael's and I got these boxes there. These are their photo boxes, really inexpensive. I got the white to match the white and wanted everything to be white as far as the bins. And it actually came with this label, which is really nice. I love this look, I love this label. But I chose not to go with it because I, again, wanted it to have that really even, nice looking, organized look to it. And having all kinds of different labels sometimes doesn't give you that look. So I flipped it over and I used these labels so that I can put these labels on everything and get a more even, organized look. So that's another tip is use the same or coordinating labels. So next I went to Lowe's and I happened to find these. I do remember the price on these. They were $9.98, which I thought was a really good price for these kind of fabric bins and for the size and the sturdiness of it. I was pretty impressed by that. These fit with the Roth and Allen shelves perfectly because these are Roth and Allen. So that worked out. And I guess that would be another tip is if you get one brand, look at the closet accessories within that brand because they're usually made to kind of fit together. I love the color, it's light, it's neutral, goes with the rest of the closet, so this was a win. Now lastly, we have our belt organizer, and I really don't have a lot of belts, I think I have like two or three, I'm not a big belt person, so I ended up getting this from Bed Bath & Beyond, and it's kind of like a huggable hanger before your belts, so this worked for me. And for my husband though, we had more of a dilemma when it came to his belts because his belts, <clears throat> let me show you, his belts all have the flat buckle on them and it seems like almost every belts organizing thing out there is made for the belts with the loops because they have hooks so that you can hook your belt, you know, onto that hook through the loop. But there is no loop here. So how do you organize these? This was a really big dilemma. I looked and I looked and I looked, found something on Amazon and I'm not liking it. But when I was at Lowe's, I ended up finding this. This is a, it's, it's made by Closet Made, so I knew it would work with the system. And it pulls out, I really love that feature. And the belts aren't stacked on top of each other, but it has a little space inside of it so that you can drop the belt in if you want, or uh, you can hook it over and it will actually stay. <laughs> so this was a winner. My husband loves it. That ended up being 
Really awesome. And lastly, we have the hangers that I chose, which, believe it or not, a lot of thought went into the hangers, and there's still a lot of thought being put into the hangers, and here's why. I got the huggable hangers because I wanted to try them. The huggable hangers, see? They're really nice. And we already had the plastic hangers. My husband ended up really still liking the plastic hangers because a lot of his clothes, what he felt, got stuck on this and he couldn't slide the clothes off as nicely on these as he could these. So he really liked these. Plus all his clothes, you know, because he's a guy, he, he doesn't wear wide boat neck things or anything like that, uh, his collars are a little bit closer up. So all of his clothes still fit on here just fine. So this was a winner for him. So okay, great, he likes those. So I was deciding whether I wanted the plastic hanger or the huggable hanger. They're both black, and I think that's important is to pick hangers that are all the same colors. And right now I still have the white hangers, but I know whatever I decide, I'll just go and buy and then recycle the white ones or Goodwill them or something like that because the plastic ones are cheap. But these ones I really love because my clothes don't slip. I have a lot of tank tops like I'm wearing now. I have a lot of wider neck things. So these are so awesome for that because your clothes really stay and it's the same color. But here's my dilemma with these. They don't slide very well on the actual rod. They get stuck on the hook. And that, to me, is very annoying versus the plastic hangers that slide very well on the rod. So I'm kind of, I'm debating right now still what I want. I haven't decided yet, but that's what's going on there. As far as these huggable hangers, if you notice, this huggable hanger has a hook right here. I don't know if you can see that. But it has, like, this, this hook right here. And this is really annoying when your hangers are lined like this, this hook gets stuck on hangers and that's really annoying. So I recommend if you buy the huggable hangers, don't buy the ones with the hook right here unless you want to use it what it's designed for I believe and that is to hook your hangers on here and have your clothes cascading down in order to save space if you have a smaller closet. In that case, I highly recommend these. That would work very well. But if you're gonna put them side by side, I would not recommend them. And lastly, when it comes to the hangers, I really love these for your jeans or your pants. And the reason being is, I can get them in black so they'll match the other hangers, but they save even more space because if you look at them, when they're hanging, the plastic one versus this one, you have a good two to three inches of space right here that you are saving by using this hanger versus that hanger. Also, it's easier to put on your pants or your jeans because you can slide them right on and off, and it has this grip part so that your jeans don't slip off. So I really love this hanger for your jeans or pants versus these, you have to loop it through, it tends to slip off, and it, it wastes a little bit more space. So I highly recommend these. And these I got from Beth, Bed Bath & Beyond, and I'm going to try to link everything below that I got and the prices try. So if um, you don't see something down there that you saw in my closet or that you see here now, let me know and I will try to get back to you with the information. Okay, so that's the system that I use to organize my closet. Those are the items I use to organize my closet with. And lastly, let me just recap and give you some tips. And the first tip would be to use every inch of space in your closet. If you see empty wall space, that means you're not organizing to the maximum potential that you could be. So when you go to organize it, plan on using every inch of wall space. Next one is to use a solid color container that's not clear for your closet specifically along with the same color labels or coordinating labels. And that is to give you a consistent, clean, organized look. When things are the same color, when you can't see sometimes the stuff that we put in things, and when all the labels are the same, it unifies the space, it makes it look cleaner, therefore more organized. 
and the labels that I bought are all from the Martha Stewart collection at Staples. I love that collection and they're both the same colors. They're blue and white so they coordinate nicely with each other. One of the last tips is to use the same colored hangers throughout your space. Having them all the same color will make them look cleaner and more organized. Lastly, fold what you can. In order to utilize space and to save space, fold what you can. That's, that's what I learned. So if you have any comments or questions or anything that I didn't answer from what I linked below, please uh, leave them in the comments. And I'm also going to leave my closet organizing video below. And that's it. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.